Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles where today we're going to be joining Tyrant's Bane here in the US Navy Tier 10 Heavy Cruiser, the USS Des Moines in a domination battle on the Northern Lights map. Now obviously this is a Tier 10 battle, he's in a Tier 10 Heavy Cruiser. In fact I think the first Tier 10 Heavy Cruiser that's still in the game. When this game launched, you could only play the Japanese and the Americans. But what about the Zhao Jingles? It's the Japanese Tier 10 Heavy Cruiser. Well, yeah, but when the game launched, the Zhao wasn't the Japanese Tier 10 Heavy Cruiser. It replaced whatever, and it was so long ago I can't remember, uh, whatever the Japanese Tier 10 Heavy Cruiser was at the time. The Des Moines, however, has always been here, and it's still got it. It's survived through thick and thin, through power creep and carrier reworks and everything. And it's still, it's still got it where it counts. Tyrant's Bane himself has, however, I am reasonably sure, not been here since the game launched. Partially because he is a self-confessed noob. He said as much in the email that accompanied this battle replay. I'm going to take some issue with that in a moment, however. But also because he has around about 6,500 games played, which seems like a lot, but in a game like this, really isn't. However, the whole self-confessed noob part, because I know... Having heard that, immediately some of you are going to go and check out his stats. So I'm going to save you the trouble, and I did it for you, because after seeing how he played, I was curious. So I went to check his stats. Oh, hang on a second. Is that a Tier 8 carrier going for a Tier 10 AA cruiser? Not only that, a Tier 8 carrier going for a Tier 8 AA cruiser, comfortably within the AA bubble of another two Tier 10 battleships and a Tier 8 AA cruiser? Oh, surely the Saipan is about to be deplaned. Well, look at how many aircraft the Tier 10 AA cruiser has shot down. Yeah, that's a big fat zero. <laughs> yeah, if you think there's such a thing as effective anti-aircraft fire in World of Warships, you are clearly new here. It used to be the case that a carrier, even a Tier 10 carrier, wouldn't go anywhere near the USS Des Moines. But those days are long gone. Anyway, yeah. Tyrant's Bane stats. He has a 57% win rating. Now, oh, hang on a minute. What is that buffalo doing? Oh, yes, yes. Come on, buffalo. Do it. Do it. Do it. Poke out. Yes. Come on. We need to feast on your tears. Armor piercing loaded. There go the shots. He's now turning out since he did get spotted and he doesn't want the same thing to happen to him that's about to happen to that buffalo. Oof. <laughs> Is this going to be his first kill? No. It's the Montana's first kill. First blood to the Montana. Anyway, we were talking about Tyrant Bane's stats because he is a self-confessed noob. And with 6,500 battles played and 57% win rate, and you might be thinking, that's no noob. And yet at the same time, if you look further into his stats, more than a third of all the battles that he's played are played at tiers 8 and 9 in battleships and cruisers. And he only manages around about 58,000 damage per battle on average and slightly more than one kill per battle on average. Which is not bad, but it's not what you'd expect of somebody with a 57% win rating. And that tells me something. Other than just looking at the win rating, that tells me that to get that kind of win rating while doing a not huge amount of damage or kills per battle, that means that Tyrant's Bane plays the objectives. He doesn't go farming huge amounts of damage. He doesn't go chasing after a ridiculous number of kills. He plays to win. He doesn't play to impress. Because I've seen players with much more impressive damage totals and much more impressive average kill totals with a much, much lower win rate. Tyrant's Bane may think he's a bit of a noob because he doesn't get colossal damage numbers and he doesn't get huge numbers of kills, at least not on average. I mean, he's actually managed to sink nine ships in one game, although I don't know what that game was, but that's what his player record shows. But he doesn't go chasing after it. What I'm trying to say here is Tyrant's Bane is not the kind of player who's ever going to star in an episode of a game of throws. <laughs> okay? <laughs> he doesn't play hard. He plays smart. He's just been rewarded by his first kill and he's already closing in on his average amount of damage done in a battle, which is 58,000. He's already up to 46. 
minor spoiler alert, the reason he sent this battle replay in in the first place was because it is actually his damage record, not just in the Des Moines, but in anything. And it's not going to be a ridiculously high amount of damage either, because he doesn't play to impress, he plays to win. But it's his damage record and he's damn proud of it, and that's why we're seeing it. And we're also seeing it because it's a damn fine example of how to win by playing smarter instead of playing harder. Oh, the Ismo over there is looking like a decent target as well. He's not quite in range yet though. And this may be a lucky coincidence, but he doesn't get the range on the Ismo until just at the point where the Ismo, at least the one in the foreground, the one in the background is too far away to see him. But the Ismo is now out of line of sight, and he is able to lob those shots over the island, so he's able to rain down high explosive on that Ismo without being detected. Now that may have been a lucky coincidence, but I expect not. He has now been spotted by the Hipper, so he immediately switches fire to the Hipper in order to erase that potential threat, although the Preussen nails him before his shots have barely cleared the barrel, but he's managed to go undetected. He saw what the threat was. It wasn't the Ismo. I mean, the Ismo posed the direct threat, but the Ismo couldn't see him. The Hipper could see him, and neutralising the Hipper meant that the Ismos couldn't pose a direct threat. I mean, they are armed with 16-inch guns and firing armor-piercing shells, a 16-inch gun can overmatch the bows of the Des Moines and potentially Citadel you from the front. Although at this kind of range it's unlikely to happen, because of the ballistic arc that the shells will have to take to reach this far, it'll be plunging fire, it'll be coming in mostly from above. But hey, why take the chance? And now that the Ismo is at a range of around about 12 kilometers, or slightly less, where those 16-inch armor-piercing shells could penetrate the bows and sit down from the front, he's not returning fire until it's safe to do so. There's a very suspicious-looking smoke screen over there that's protecting him from the line of sight. He pops the radar just in case it's the Genan. It's one of those new Pan-Asian light cruisers. Well, yeah, definitely. But those things are basically Atlantas in various different forms and flavors and 8-inch armor-piercing shells can really wreck those ships. You have to hit them first, of course. Notice how he's slowed to a stop. He is in a heavy cruiser, he doesn't want to get so close that they see him through the smoke while firing, although once again the fun police are ruining <laughs> everything. He's been spotted from the air by the Saipan. That's no longer the case. Also, he wants to ensure that he captures this cap circle because while we've been talking about how smart he's been playing, the team have been getting their ass handed to them. The enemy team did have three of the cap points. The only reason they don't still have three of the cap points is because Tyrant's Bane is doing his level best. Oh, unfortunately, he got reset right at the last second there as the Jinan smoke screen dissipated. That was unfortunate. But he's still at least contesting the cap circle. Now he just needs to get out of line of fire of the Ismo before that ship swings its guns around and gives him an armor-piercing enema. Doesn't mean he has to stop shooting, of course. Keep him, he can still stay in the cap circle and keep the spit of that island between himself and anything that could spot him. Looks like the Lexington's going for the enemy Saipan. You know, that's absolutely fine. Let the fun police annoy each other rather than bothering real ships. Yeah, we're, we're perfectly happy with that. 20 seconds and he can finish capturing Charlie. Looks like the friendly breast is suiciding. Yep. Charging straight into two is a Moser Schlieffen, a Forrest Sherman, a Jinan and a Bismarck. Well, if he wanted to die, that's a surefire guaranteed way of doing it. The team are down to just under 200 points. Although Tyrant's Bane is about to flip this cap circle. There it is. Right, he no longer needs to lurk around in here. Unfortunately, the Ismo he was shooting at went undetected. However, he set a fire with the last salvo, and ships that are burning have increased surface detection range. It makes them easier to spot, which means that the Ismo then got spotted by the Zeton, who's in the process of flipping the cap circle at Bravo, so Tyrant's Bane is able to continue shooting at him. And there's another fire. He's now up to nearly 120, in fact he is at 120,000 damage because that fire continues to burn. Despite all this, mostly due to the colossal ass kicking that his team's been taking, they're three kills behind, and they only really started working the caps very recently, they are still 400 points short of the enemy team. Although the Zeton has just managed to flip Bravo. So they're going to start catching up. But in order for that to happen, they're going to have to stop dying, and the enemy team are going to have to start doing some really stupid shit. Now what that Isabeau is doing here doesn't really count as stupid shit. I mean, yeah, he's 
given a flat broadside to a Des Moines at what is significantly less than extremely long range. And while the Des Moines is a powerful ship, it is still just a cruiser. It's not a battleship. The Ismo is not going to get bitch slapped into the middle of next week with a single armor piercing salvo, but the Des Moines doesn't do things in single armor piercing salvos. It has a sub five second reload. It spits out eight inch shells faster than some destroyers that spit out 4.5 inch shells. And also notice how Tyrant's Bane is angling away. At this range, the trajectory of the Ismo's 16 inch armor piercing shells, and here they come, would be capable of smashing right through his bow and stern armor as if it wasn't even there. But not his belt armor, not angled like that. Actually, I'm not even sure those were the Ismo's main battery guns. Those may have been the midship secondaries. It looks like the Ismo is instead, and the Bismarck as well, going for the Preussen. Which is an even dumber idea, because the Preussen is bow tanking, and the Preussen has a 120mm belt protecting the bows. So it can't be overmatched by anything. And as far as Tyrant's Bane is concerned, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, you, you guys go ahead and shoot at the ship that can actually tank your incoming shells. I mean, he can take a 16-inch armor-piercing shell on his belt, but the Des Moines has a big flat ass that could also catch an armor-piercing shell, resulting in significant damage. So he is doing his best with some careful angling here to mitigate against that happening, and yep, he's killed the Ismo. But if they're going to continue to fire at the Preussen, I'm sure Tyrant's Bane is not going to complain. And well done to the Preussen, by the way, for taking the initiative and tanking the damage like that. It was a lot of damage, though. I mean, it's not just the Ismo and the Bismarck who were shooting at him. The Bismarck secondaries are probably the most dangerous thing about the ship, especially at that kind of range. There's also the Schlieffen and the Zhao, and I'm pretty sure he was also under attack from the enemy side pan. So, you know, good job, Preussen. But much like the Rebel cruisers at the Battle of Endor, it simply can't repel firepower of that magnitude. They're going to get the Bismarck, though. And... Well, it could have been any of them, but it was the Lexington who did it. He is able to get some shots out at the Schlieffen, right as the Schlieffen goes undetected with the Preussen on the far side of an island, and nobody other than Tyrant's Bane having direct line of fire, but he's outside his spotting range until he hits him and sets a fire, which increases his surface detection range, allowing Tyrant's Bane to reacquire and get a second salvo off. He then immediately goes undetected, which tells us that he just burned his damage control to put the fire out. Can we set another fire? Uh, no, a couple of shatters. Oh well, never mind. The Preussen did go down, of course, and Tyrant's Bane has gone undetected, which means the Schlieffen now doesn't have a line of sight because he's behind the island. But with the loss of the Preussen, the team are, once again, momentarily on the back foot at least as far as the points are concerned, but they have three of the four cap circles. So they are almost immediately again ahead. They are still one kill behind, however. And with just less than seven minutes of the game remaining, this is not yet a win. I don't know how much health the Zeton down to the southwest has, but he's not in a particularly useful position. They really do need to get at least one more kill, and then hold on to a minimum of two of the cap circles. And with the Lexington spotting the Zhao, now is the time to try to sneak that extra kill in. Which is going to be really risky, because he's not just going to get shot at by the Zhao, he's also going to get shot at by the Schlieffen. But he picks his moment well, getting himself a Citadel on the Zhao, and the Zhao kind of seals its own fate here, by returning fire so it stays detected and then turning to get its rear turrets to fire, exposing even more broadside, which is, well, basically something that you never do when you're in a cruiser and a Des Moines is shooting at you. And yes, that was the Confederate award. He has done 267,000 damage. And the fireworks that you saw going off meant that with Bill Halsey as the captain of this ship, a talent just activated that made the already terrifying reload of the Des Moines even faster. I think he's down to something like a three and a half second reload with that talent and presumably also the adrenaline rush skill. Meanwhile, here come the fun police again. Ah, oh, this will be fine. It's only a tier eight carrier after all. This is a tier 10 AA cruiser. There you go. He shot one aircraft down. <laughs> That'll teach him. <laughs> oh, God. 
Honestly, why do we even bother? Well, we don't. That's why he hasn't bothered taking the defensive AA consumable, and he's got the hydroacoustic search consumable instead, because hydro's useful all the time, and defensive AA isn't even useful when it's useful. Right, anyway, bad news. Well, it's, it's not terrible news. I mean, it's three ships left alive on both teams, including a carrier each, and the Jinan over there did flip the cap circle at Charlie. Which is fine. I mean, it's not ideal, but both teams have the same number of cap circles, they have the same number of points coming in, and Tyrant's Bain team is 150 points ahead. So as long as nothing else changes, they're still going to win. Unfortunately, the Zeton over there has now picked this moment to stop running away from the Jinan because he's realised the Jinan wasn't chasing him, and in chasing the Jinan, he's run into a whole bunch of the Jinan's deepwater torpedoes. And we really can't afford to lose a ship at this point. I mean, I don't want to be too critical of the Zeton here. He has been a useful member of the team. He doesn't have any kills, but I don't know how much damage he's done. And he did flip a cap by himself, something that only Tyrant's Bane has also been able to do. But he really should be running away rather than attacking right now. Tyrant's Bane is going to try to take the pressure off him, however, by killing that Jinan. How did he know? that the Jinan was inside radar range when he didn't have a target lock on him because he was hidden inside a smoke screen. Have a look at the targeting cursor. Do you see the numbers next to it? That's the range to wherever the cursor is. So as long as he was aiming the cursor at the smoke screen, he was going to know exactly when the Jinan was inside radar range. This means he is all but guaranteed to get the Jinan, who is desperately trying to return fire and has managed to set a fire, but is not going to survive the encounter. Unfortunately, Neither did the Zeton. Now it's not a completely points neutral exchange, because sinking a battleship is worth more than sinking a cruiser, but it's good enough. They're still 140 points ahead, and with both teams in possession of two cap circles, they're going to stay 140 points ahead, unless somebody sinks something. This is the point where Tyrant's Bane realises he doesn't need to win any harder than he already is. And it's why he is not shooting at the Schlieffen, even though he has a target lock and a clear line of fire. He doesn't need to sink the Schlieffen in order to win. He just needs to not die. It would be useful if the friendly Lexington could also not die, turn around and run to the north. And looking at the Lexington's position on the minimap, no, he is actually heading south. It might be a good idea to have a friendly word in his ear. <laughs> no, wait. He is turning. It looks like the Lexington is also capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. He is turning around and hopefully making a beeline for the north. With slightly more than two minutes to go, they should be able to win on points. And then, of course, the fun police. <laughs> Try to ruin it for everyone. You know what? You can't blame the side pan. He's doing what he needs to do in order to win. But this is a really dangerous moment for Tyrant's Bane. He has managed to go undetected. But the Schlieffen secondaries are going to be a problem. Actually, it's not so much the Schlieffen... Hang on, why is he firing? It's fine, he's got the armor between himself and the Schlieffen. He can get two, maybe three salvos away undetected. The problem here is not really the Schlieffen secondaries, though. Oh, and he's set a fire, which continues to burn. I mean, the problem is going to be the Schlieffen secondaries, but the Schlieffen secondaries are only going to be a problem because of another characteristic of the Schlieffen. It's faster than the Des Moines. <laughs> <laughs> so while Tyrant's Bane is doing his level best to get the hell out of there, the Schlieffen can catch him. And he's never going to go undetected with the fun police coming in again for a torpedo run. So while Tyrant's Bane has been desperately trying to not win any harder than he absolutely needs to, what he absolutely needs to do right now is definitely sink that Schlieffen. Because he can't outrun it. So he's angling as best as he can to try to take any main battery shells on his belt, but there's nothing he can do about those secondaries. It's just a question of who can do the most burst DPM in the shortest possible amount of time. There's another fire. Oh! <laughs> he might actually do it. Come on, boy. You've got this. Shots out. Oh, here come the main battery guns. Turn, take them on the belt, take them on the belt. He takes them on the belt, he gets the Schlieffen. There's the Kraken unleashed, he's on fire. Burns the damage control. 
He's made it on 340 health, but some of the Schlieffen secondary shells are still in the air. He's down to 150 health. <laughs> the fun police are coming back. But the kill on the Schlieffen put him so far ahead on points that he had to wait a few more seconds. The team reached 100 points. The fun police didn't get to ruin the party. And that was a win for Tyrant Spain in the USS Des Moines. Honestly, Tyrant Spain may be a self-confessed noob. And he might not get all the kills, but he did in this game. And he might not get the huge damage numbers, but he did in this game. <laughs> but he has that win rating, not because he plays harder or tries to win harder. He plays smarter, he plays the objectives, and that's what wins games. So congratulations. Game very well played and a thoroughly well-deserved personal damage record. I hope you all enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.